Good morning, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstet from Forex Trading Unlocked, and I'm here with the Forex Market Breakdown for you, sponsored by Nadex. And real quick, we just want to uh, get through some basic accounting stuff. Let's get the screen moving. Okay, here's our disclaimer from Forex Trading Unlocked, just basically saying this is for illustrative purposes. And here is our Nadex disclaimer, which says the same thing, warning you of the risk of trading and what have you. This video is just for educational and illustrative purposes. So with that, let's take a look at the economic calendar. <clears throat> Today, <clears throat> July 31st, we're already on July 31st, can you believe that? The US dollar is going to be impacted by the FOMC meeting that comes to a close this afternoon. We also have for the US dollar over the next couple of days, we have the ISM and construction spending, which are key uh, fundamental economic numbers that are it's going to be coming after the Fed meeting. But believe me, the Fed's going to be watching these numbers tomorrow. And then we have unemployment, consumer sentiment, and factory orders on Friday. Unemployment, always an important number, but probably not going to skew one way or another to uh, difference to cause any shakeup. Um, at least that would be a surprise if it did. Uh, consumer sentiment and factory orders, however, I think are going to be very big numbers. Um, any lags in those? Uh, consumer sentiment may see a little bit of a, um, a downtick. Um, the factory orders is the key to uh, see what number, how that comes out because we've had a slowing uh, globally, especially in uh, Europe that came out last week. <clears throat> last week. Um, and the ECB uh, met, um, we've had this central bank marathon that began uh, a little bit over a week ago, and now it's uh, coming to a crescendo with the U.S. Uh, FOMC meeting uh, today. There's a couple other central banks around the world that has some speeches and whatever planned over the next couple of days, but um, everyone's waiting on the FOMC. So what does that mean? Um, FOMC is setting the tone moving forward for central banks. Um, and then uh, we have uh, some interesting things that are going to kind of get some spin off of this. Uh, we have uh, Boris uh, Johnson, who is now the new UK Prime Minister, uh, and uh, the pound is crashing, just crashing lower. Um, will the Fed meeting today um, yield something that could possibly uh, spark and lift the pound? Uh, we'll have to take a look at the chart and see. Um, so anyhow, with that, let's take a look at the Euro US dollar. So now typically going into um, FOMC meetings and like we, right now, we definitely have a lot of people eyeballing what's going on. I'm curious to see whether the Euro, the US dollar, uh, excuse me, the, the US Fed does pull the trigger today. Uh, the factored in consensus right now is for sure a quarter point cut. A uh, half point cut is kind of on the table, but it's been leaning <clears throat> back towards just a quarter point, point over the next few meetings, um, starting with today. Uh, is it going to happen? I, I got a good feeling that they're probably going to cut the rate today. Uh, now, the, the funny thing about it is, is the Fed going to cut the rate because of it's what they really wanted to do? Or is their hand being forced a little bit by the ECB? Uh, anyone that's been watching the central banks with what they've been doing uh, knows that the ECB held back and didn't do anything last week. They did announce that uh, QE measures are going to be implemented and they're already working on them, uh, slowly uh, putting those into uh, the marketplace. But they're not be being very reactive yet. They're waiting for today's meeting and they, they point blank said that with transparency. They're waiting on the FOMC meeting week um, before they cut their rate. So if I think what's going to happen is this is going to be the domino effect. They're waiting for the East or the, the U.S. Fed to cut the rates and then after that we'll see a domino effect that will um, start to trickle down along the, uh, around uh, the globe. With the ECB already in the QE motion, I think once we cut the rate, they'll cut the rate as well. Uh, the Bank of Japan, <clears throat> um, however, uh, probably is not going to follow through right away, and we'll get to that in a second because it's very key how these charts have been trending. So the Euro US dollar has been in a bearish move now for the past uh, month and a half since the middle of June going into now the beginning of August. Uh, tomorrow, I can't believe we're talking about August already. So we have this downward sloping resistance line that shows you the slope, uh, not too um, severe of a slope, and right now because of the Fed meeting and uh, the the fact that we've had this balancing going on in the Euro US dollar um, that it's just trading in this little tight range here. It's just between 111.87 and 111.02. So we don't even have a full dollar range here that the Euro US dollar has been trading in now for basically a little over a week. 
And that's in the wake of having had um, the Bank of England meet, the, U the ECB meet, uh, there was also the, uh, the RDA that met last week, um, plenty of speeches, Fed speeches, and now we have the, the US FOMC meeting that uh, started yesterday and today. And you can see this chart was uh, pulled just before we uh, started this webinar. So the range, um, besides the fact that the past few days or week has been caught in less than a dollar range, you can see how tight the range has been for uh, Euro US dollar traders for the past few sessions. Uh, not leaving much on the table for any type of trader, whether you're a bull or a bear. And ironically, being one of the major uh, currencies in the dollar index, this one has been going nowhere and staying stable. So if you track the uh, your most forex uh, and currency traders watch the dollar index to some degree, the dollar index has been railing over the past uh, week and a half. Um, however, the euro and the pound are the two biggest weights in that uh, index. And as you can see, not much has been going on in the euro. So the euro weight for that uh, dollar index, that's not causing the rally. It's not causing a break or a rally, but it's definitely not influencing the trend. Uh, now we have this key uh, little directional pivot right here, right at 111.83. Uh, and just above it, we have this uh, last lower move high at 111, uh, excuse me, 111.87. So this would be your uh, breakout band here. I think for any upside action, you have to take out that 111.87. So for bulls, I would say um, play the breakout to this upside. That's where you should look for action. And for the bears, I would also use the, um, the current uh, lower move low as your bias for further uh, downward trending markets. Otherwise, um, this has been a market that's been in a, basically a three to six five dollar range for the whole year. Uh, especially trading within a basically a $3 range for the past five months. If this uh, Federal FOMC meeting today comes out, if they cut the rate, which is expected, it's already factored in. So is it going to jostle the euro US dollar? Probably not too much. I think that if you see this uh, one day here to pre set the tone for our um, our purple lines here, our purple breakouts, this one day we had this very big indecision. I think this was back when uh, Boris came in. It's, yeah, yeah, that's when he came in last week. So we had a lot of uh, action that was trying to uh, get this market turning around for bullets. And then we also came down and made newer move lows. But then we, at the end of the day, settled slightly positive, which is a sign of indecision. And then we, that set the tone for the next four sessions now going into today for more indecision. Uh, unlike the other major currencies, I think that the ECB, because of the fact that uh, they said they're going to wait until the U.S. Fed meets this week, so I think the currency for the euro U.S. dollar is not going to really see much action until we get a follow-through um, reaction from the ECB. So we have a lot of fundamental factors, economic factors that are weighing on these currencies right now. So a technical analysis is not out the window, um, but I would use it. Uh, an air of caution when just trying to use the technical numbers right now because these forces are, are we know that they're there and we are coming to the precipice of finally make, having decisions made. And once that happens, we can probably begin to develop a trend that will, um, whether it's a continued of this, right now we have a current bear trend in the Euro US dollar where we see newer move lows, um, or will we see more of the same, which if we do get a rally above 111.87 folks, don't think that that's going to be a major bullish turn in the euro US dollar, meaning euro strength and US dollar weakness, um, because right now euro strength is where's that going to come from? Um, US dollar uh, weakness also. Uh, right now the dollar index is strong, and no matter what they try and do to beat the dollar, it doesn't seem like it wants to really go down. So, that being said, here's your containment range right here. And I think you might get, especially today and over the next few sessions, uh, we may just see a range trade develop in between these pivots and it may get very, very tight. Uh, if we do not get a spiking action this afternoon in the Euro US dollar, I would bet dollars to donuts that probably tomorrow and uh, Friday, we're gonna, until we get to unemployment, we're going to see pretty much this chart where it's at right now. And then we'll see some kind of jostling around this containment range. So once again, your upside breakout pivot is this 111.87 and downside is 111.02. Right now, the market's trading pretty much right in the center of that. And it could be a flat line until 1.15 Chicago time, folks. So I would be 
very leery of taking any directional plays right now. Now for uh, range traders and options traders, there's plenty of opportunities going up until probably noon, one o'clock. Uh, after that, then I would say, uh, well, that's a, it's going to be a crapshoot. Uh, you always get all kinds of algo spikes that happen once you have a Fed announcement and whatever. And like I said, uh, if they do do a quarter point or don't do anything today, that's kind of factored into the market and it's already there. It would only be if they did do really shoot the uh, the numbers up and do a half a point today. I think you'd see a stirring of the the markets and the or or would be them changing their speak, saying that we are dovish in the long term, but right now we're going to hold our, our cards. See, that could be the thing is, you know, we have a game of poker going on between the ECB and the uh, and the U.S. Fed right now. Uh, if they're, the ECB is trying to force the hand of the Fed to make the first to pull the trigger first and start the domino is falling. Um, so we'll see what happens. OK, so with the next one, let's see what's going on. So another European currency that uh, we look to when we're trying to figure out with uh, is the dollar stirring or not. Um, like I said, the dollar index is rallying. The euro um, is going nowhere. And look at the U.S. dollar Swiss. Now, this had been in a bear market for uh, many months now. Uh, recently, it settled into sort of a range trade. Um, it had a, a nice bullish correction, but not much came of that. Now, we had this failed attempt at parity a few sessions ago. I'll notice I put chop zone for the circle. It looks very similar, <clears throat> excuse me, to the EU, where, uh, or excuse me, the Euro US dollar trade, where um, we may be seeing a wide range trade for a while. So let's take a look at what these breakout points are. Uh, we had this initial uh, last lower move low that happened towards the end of June. And all the way into July, we rallied up into this little spot here after the first week, and that helped bounce us off this downward sloping resistance. The trend was uh, continued lower with the bears. And then a few sessions ago last week, when Boris came on, um, we saw a nice little lift, um, and that caused U.S. dollar strength. Uh, I think this pop was because after Boris was uh, in not well signed into uh, office, he made some comments that really dragged the uh, the pound, um, which gave uh, a lot of strength to the U.S. dollar. And, and when you have one of the major currencies that really either breaks out upside or downside that momentum typically has a little spillover into some of the other currencies and i think that that dollar strength is where we had this last pop but then look what happened now here we are today we just came into this chop zone this chart was taken just about an hour ago um, then we had tuesday and monday so monday the market did not open up it opened strong um from it's a little bit stronger than friday's close but then it fell apart right away um, Friday's high, um, they made the bills made a run at this 99.54 pivot level, which is the last uh, lower move high, and it failed, got rejected. So today's trading is going to be very interesting. Right now, you can see the range um, is very tight for the US dollar Swiss. There's not much going on, and um, that's something to always take into account. Whenever you're coming into um, central bank meetings, uh, those indicative currencies typically will tighten up their ranges. And especially with a meeting like this, where the FOMC uh, is, uh, well, we the factoring in of what the consensus is, is probably on with what's going to happen, uh, but it hasn't happened yet. So we need to get to 115, and once we get through that, then we'll start to unload and see what happens. Uh, now, what is very interesting is that this is hovering right below this pivot, okay? Now, if we take out this 99.54, that would be mean what? It would mean that we would have made a higher move high. That then would tell us that this overall bear trend that we've been in for months is most likely over. Now, does it mean that we're going to have a major bullish trend and this is the base? It could be. This low that we just spoke about here in June um, could be the lowest point that we're going to see the U.S. dollar Swiss trade for quite some time. Uh, but that may not be the case because right now it looks more like the market is wedging in a neutral consensus and it doesn't really want to go. It doesn't have any real reason to go breaking outside of this range. So this rejection, I think, for if you're a bear, you have a good short term setup to uh, be short against this 99.54 pivot. I would not be long. If you're going to be a bear, I'd be careful with being, having any type of short position up on here. If you're going to do any type of selling, 
um, beyond this pivot, I would say it, it would be better to wait for a rally and look for a sell signal later, uh, because any type of trading up in this area means that the, the bullish, bullish momentum is in place and it will be probably more of a buying dip situation than a selling rally um, formation moving forward. Uh, now, we, like I said, with the Fed, we pretty much know what it's going to do. Is the market going to react? I don't know. I think that most likely you're going to see the U.S. dollar Swiss kind of ride down along this downward sloping uh, uh, resistance line and not necessarily like it wants to be a bear. But I think it's just going to consolidate within this range between 98.04 and 99.54. This is only a buck and a half range for the U.S. dollar Swiss, but it has contained it for a good portion of the summer so far and it may continue to do so. So only if um, a major selling point would be a break below 98.04. And uh, like I said, the bullish um, point would be 99.54 because we would be setting newer move highs. How high will that go? Well, I would say that will probably challenge this parity level. Uh, that this, you see this horizontal line here, the yellow one, this is kind of a line in the sand. It's our parity number. We know that Parity has been something the market has shot for, and it did above here. It held for a few months, if you look back around May, uh, but it failed. It got all the way up to 102, and now that set the tone for this bearish trend that we're in, that we still are in, in the longer term sense. So only a breach of this first pivot at 99.54, I think we'll have the bulls challenging this parity level, but don't get overzealous on that either. We could have another rejection just like it did here, and settle into a, a wide range trade. So I think over the next four to five months, it wouldn't be outside the realm of possibility to really see this uh, range trade stretched out. So with that being said, our key points once again is 98.04 to the downside and um, right here, 99.54, I think that's a critical zone where bears can sell against um, bulls for sure will be jumping on this bandwagon, I think, uh, to ch challenge parity, but not, It'll be probably an exhaustive move where it happens really quick and very fast and not gonna, you're not gonna get very much follow through um, above that. So um, that being said, let's move on to our next one. Okay, so now we're here at the pound US dollar. So what's gonna happen with the pound US dollar? Uh, the bears, they continue to pressure. Um, we have the new uh, prime minister that was sworn in last week. And you can see what's happened. Um, First, uh, this is obviously this week's trading. Today, we have a little bit of lift, a little bit of positive action going on with the pound US dollar. Um, with a sell off like this, for even it just to be a little positive close today, that's not uplifting or anything. Uh, it would, it's just, could be just a reaction to uh, the overzealous selling pressure that's been existing so far. So, our key directional pivot is this buck 2560 right here. Uh, right above here, then we're going to see, I would say, a good good challenge of this 127 to 128 area. Uh, that's a long way to go though for us to get up to there. Um, before we do anything, we have to breach this downward sloping resistance, as well as this pivot here at about 23.86. So don't try and catch a falling knife, folks. This is a, a market that is just getting hammered. And I think this is why the dollar index also is because the pound and the euro are two biggest weights in the dollar index. Obviously, this trend has been uh, pressuring uh, pound and uh, lifting the dollar for the past uh, few months. Is it going to continue, or is this just a blow-off extreme now that we have the new prime minister, we have the FOMC meeting today, which is going to get the ECB to react? All these central banks will start to move, and then the question is, what's the bank going to do in the UK? Uh, that is something I don't even want to begin to try and factor into because there's so many variables that are making the pound weak. So uh, Brexit aside, um, interest rate dovish factors aside from multiple central banks, uh, is, that, is, is any of that going to help lift the pound or is it going to help to continue to bury the pound? Well, I think that the key thing is that in the short run you, uh, for the pound US dollar, obviously, the momentum is to the downside. Be very careful trying to buy this market. I would say look for a buy signal. Uh, if today, let's just say that the market was to settle like it did here, which after an FOMC meeting, who knows what's, what kind of swinging we're going to get. But let's just say hypothetically that the market was to close, the FOMC was done, there was no reaction, the pound US dollars settled where it's at right now. What does that mean? 
Uh, most likely, it would mean that we're obviously getting ready to digest this recent break. Uh, this is a pretty severe move. If you look at how th this move here from this eye down to this low here, look at how long that took. That took, you know, three weeks to do. Uh, this move here has happened in the past week, and it's a very big drop from basically the one just above the 125 level to teetering just above the 121 level. That's a $4 move in the pound US dollar where uh, the dollar index is railing, the pound US dollar is falling apart, but we know you notice from our charts that the Euro US dollar, nothing's going on with it, it's going sideways. How is that possible, you know? So it, the, is it Brexit and Fed stuff that's driving this break in the pound US dollar? Probably not. I think that the sideways action that you're seeing in the, uh, in the US dollar Swiss, as well as the Euro US dollar, and you can see it also in the US dollar yen. These are all major currencies and they're range trading. So I think that it gives you a good indication that after the Fed reacts, which most likely will be today, that we may start to see something that uh, a correction in the dollar. Now, because of cutting rates and in the short run, you would think that there will be dollar bulls. Um, that would make sense on a fundamental level. The only thing is that this has been factored in now for so many months. And like I said, uh, the quarter point is almost 100% over sometime between now and the next three meetings. So if it doesn't happen today, there's not many people out there that don't believe it's going to still happen, you know? Um, and 50% is still something that's in the, in the um, spectrum of consensus also over the next three meetings to the end of the year. Um, so 50% is probably not going to happen, but the quarter will. And once it does, well, it's already in the market. So there's, you know, buy the rumor, sell the fact, you know, there could be a, a big knee jerk reaction in the dollar index. I mean, anything can happen, um, but we could be right for a short term correction uh, just for just because of the momentum. It's by that point, once the Fed does pull the trigger today, then everyone's gonna to start to take profits. They've been riding these positions for quite some time. I mean, look at this pound position. If you were a bear um, selling into the beginning of the summer, I mean, we're going into August, you just gotta be laughing it up right now. And any long-term bears um, that if they haven't taken profit yet, and I'm not saying that they should, maybe with this market's gonna keep on breaking for another four months. Um, the trend, overall trend is weak. Um, but I think that most likely you're going to start to see the, a choppiness evolve here with the pound U.S. dollar. And let's just say that the pound U.S. dollar holds and stabilizes. Well, what does that mean for the U.S. dollar? It means U.S. dollar is going to be waning in strength, um, most likely, against all your currencies. So you'll probably start to see some corrective moves that uh, is today. You know, a lot of times when you have a, a big meeting like the FOMC meeting, it's a short-term pinnacle uh, pivot point for uh, different currencies and different uh, markets. So it's not just for the Forex markets, currency markets. This also happens to stock indexes and as well as obviously the interest rate markets. So that's the thing is that remember that interest rates are a variable that control the uh, pricing of currencies globally. So the fact that we have we've had the central bank marathon has been going on now for a week and a half, crescendoing with today. Uh, this is a big deal. So we could see turning points in multiple markets develop. So let's just say hypothetically, Fed cuts rates, everything's rosy or doesn't, whatever. Um, we get a spiky algo day today and maybe even make another lower low, um, or we, we rally off of this. Who knows, we'll see what happens at 115. So right now I'd say if you're not already short and have tight stops, I would stay out of this trade. Um, but then that being said, we could see going into, let's say August 16th, this market could start to gravitate and just trade sideways and reach up towards this pinnacle level at 123.86, which would be your, your pivot with this downward sloping resistance. And then we'll get through it or not, but who knows? But I think right now we're ripe for a situation where I'm not trying to call a bottom here, but I think that we're lo looking at a potential bottoming phase where we can start to see some spikes up. Um, would they be rallied? Is it? Is it's going to be tough. It's going to be a very tough trade. I think if you're a bull, you're going to have to use really, really tight stops. Like, for instance, 
Um, today, obviously, the market's a little higher. Um, yesterday's low, would, I would not be risking anything against uh, lower than any low that's in place right now. So, all, all, and that's where I think you got to be careful. All your longs are going to be weak. So, the algo's got a good chance it's touching off lots of stops on the low end and not really getting follow through. Um, and then we also can the same thing even to the upside. So, today, be very careful. And my perspective is I think that we're going to see a stabilization going on. Um, and which would then put a little draw on the U.S. Uh, dollar index. Remember, we saw that the U.S. dollar Swiss, excuse me, the U.S. dollar Swiss and the Euro U.S. dollar, they've been trading kind of sideways. So if we can start to get a move where those currencies, um, especially, um, get stronger, meaning dollar weakness, um, the dollar index should start to see a little bit of a correction. And as well as if, especially the U.S. dollar Swiss um, starts to show dollar weakness and Swiss strength. Well, then I think that will start to um, feed on itself and it may give a little boost and just a little bit of a lift to the um, British pound US dollar. Uh, so once again, our key pivots right now for the pound US dollar was definitely um, this downward sloping resistance, um, but for sure, a buck 23.86, anything below here, it's going to be choppy and looking for um, a rally to sell. Uh, a breach and especially a close above 123.86, We'll probably put it into this area here where it's going to be buck, bucking up against this buck 2560, uh, which that would be, I think, the critical cat catalyst to get any real true bullish momentum going in the pound US dollar, as well as if we get trading back up here. Well, then that means we probably have some good uh, conversations going with Brexit, the federal, uh, the central bank actions will have been completed. Um, you know, not that they're going to, I mean, they're going to be busy for months ahead. Um, that's going to keep on with this dovishness, but right now we need to get through this initial um, shock. And once we get through that, I think that we're going to start to see the shock waves, you know, ripple effect um, go on into the next few months and then give us some really good direction. Uh, right now we're all riding the consensus trade um, that the dovishness is going to obviously result with um, FOMC cutting of rates, or excuse me, the U.S. Fed cutting of rates and during the FOMC meeting, as well as the uh, trickle down. We know that the ECB um, is for sure going to follow through by chasing the Fed. So they're trying to force the hand at the table. Um, we'll see what goes on with Powell and if he's going to bend. Um, we don't know, um, but we certainly will know in a few hours, right? So if you're not in a trade already, be very careful, and if you're long, if you did buy into this dip here with the pound U.S. dollar, um, you definitely have some, uh, you're putting on a trade that's not for the faint of heart. So I would say your risk would be your low from yesterday um, or not much below that because uh, don't try and catch a falling knife. This could, this market could still just get slammed. Like everyone, we already know that um, Fed speak aside that the new uh, prime minister, uh, a a no Brexit is not something that's on his agenda. So pushing for Brexit still is. And uh, well, obviously, you know, we see what that's done to the pound over the past week. So your key pivot again is 123.86 for a challenge of 125.60. And only above there do we start to really become bullish. So with that, now we're going to go and look at our final currency for the day. The U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. Now, notice how this one has been sliding also. However, it bottomed back at the uh, end of June. Now, look at what happened. We had a rally up to this uh, 109 area, and then we fell back recently down to here. We established a higher move low after having a higher move high. But then we had rejection. We had rejection, folks. Looks like a chart that we just looked at, didn't it? Looked like the Swiss, kind of. So, um, U.S. dollar strength, U.S. dollar weakness. Uh, U.S. dollar weakness, uh, especially like since I was mentioning about the potential turn in the um, dollar index, would then give us what? That would probably set up the U.S. dollar uh, JPY traders for a nice little sell-off. Uh, and I would say that uh, when you're looking at just the fundamentals, you know, we said that they were out the window for most of the trades. Um, but here's what will be our guide for confirmation of U.S. dollar strength with the U.S. dollar yen. Uh, Right now, we're, we're kind of slipping down towards this area here, which I think this is the target area where you're going to see the U.S. dollar yen fall into over the next uh, week and a half, two weeks. Now, this is just a um, reaction to a sideways trade. Um, I don't think that this rejection is because U.S. dollar weakness is there and there's Japanese dollar strength. 
um, so much is that it doesn't matter. Right now, we still have the trade wars going on with China and the, the JPY, just like the Euro, um, they have negative numbers that are showing slowdowns, but they also have things that are showing upticks, especially with um, Japan. So it's very neutral against the dollar. Um, and obviously there'll be a reaction off of the Fed, uh, but I think that's factored in. I mean, you can see that with all the not, everything that's been talked about um, geopolitically, especially trying to drive the dollar, and even with the dollar index, <clears throat> there's there hasn't been much of a movement. The, the yen's been stuck in this range trade for months. Overall trend has been bearish, um, but it's, it started this uh, sideways trade already back at, right when the summer started. And it, we are very likely that um, no matter what goes on with the Federal Reserves and whatever and the central banks around the world, that this U.S. dollar yen trade is probably going to be contained in the sideways area um, because we know that there's still the China talks. And while it's impacting the Asian trade zone, uh, there's been upticks for, for Japan. So they have some... Uh, their, their fundamental economic numbers right now are a little bit mixed. Uh, the, the question is, what will the BLJ, BLJ, excuse me, the BOJ do? Um, uh, will they cut rates if global events hit their economy? That's probably when you'll see it. Um, what does that mean? That means that uh, unlike the FOMC meeting, which is definitely something the whole globe is watching, it's not a global event. Um, so a global event would mean, let's say, that uh, the U.S. and Iran um, start to have issues again that really cause a big spike and a run-up in oil. That would be a case where we could see a big move to the upside or to the downside, um, depending on uh, whether we have flight to quality in the dollar because of an actual incursion um, or if we have a uh, rally in the yen um, because of other factors that have to do with the economy and uh, productions and things like that. So those are factors that I think right now, the US dollar yen trade, they're not affected by the interest rate issues, especially because the BOJ has made it really clear that unlike the ECB, the Bank of England, the Royal Bank of Australia, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, they're not looking to see what Powell does today and then all of a sudden say, hey guys, um, Powell finally pulled the trigger, let's do this. That is not on the table. So that being said, probably going to be settling into this range here, a little bit more sideways, and don't expect any major, major moves right now. At least that's the way I see it right now for um, where we're at. Um, but if we do get a rally above this 109.13 uh, area, which would take out this high, what does that mean? If we get above there, that would mean higher move highs, bullish uh, signal, and then the overall trend that has been sideways most likely is to be is the basing for a new trend higher. Is it going to be overall a big monster of a trend? Probably not. I think that you're going to see see this gap up here. All gaps get filled, at least so goes the expression. So if we do get a US dollar run, let's see, that's where I don't know if we're going to get much of a rally because you would have to have monster US dollar strength to generate a follow-through rally up into this area. Just like US dollar weakness, I think you need a lot to really keep the prevailing trend lower to try and take out this last low that we set um, back in uh, June. So with that being said, rejection, rejection, rejection. Who knows, was it really a rejection or was it a, it was a sign of what's to come, which would mean a sliding of the market down into this area? Or was it just a little pause for the cause before the bulls really gear up and start a new trend higher for the US dollar yen? So key pivot is 109, um, and then also definitely below 107 to uh, 219 here, this low uh, failure here is definitely in my eyes, a very bearish signal that this range will be testing the lower extremes and trying to set a lower uh, area for the uh, range as well. So with that being said, make sure you do your homework, look at the markets, weigh all your potential trades and have a plan and stay the course with that plan. Uh, and since we have a Fed meeting, if you're not in right now, um, I would never try and force a trade and never trade just a trade. Always have a reason, have your uh, risk uh, parameters set. And like I said, if you're not in it today, wait until tomorrow. There will be lots of things to follow through and look at tomorrow, I'm sure. So if you 
want to hear more and know more about what I have to think or say, uh, you can always find me at www.forex-trading-unlock.com. You can also find me on Twitch, uh, Stock Twits and LinkedIn. Please like, follow and share. We would appreciate it. And also I wrote a book called High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, which helps you to decide when to find buy and selling opportunities that work in the Forex markets, stock markets, option markets, and all kinds of markets. And they definitely help with correlation trades too, which you can learn more about if you read the book. So on that note, thank you very much for your time from the Nadex and from Forex Trading Unlocked. You have a great day. Thank you very much. Take care.